Today we're going to start the process to make uh, some of these fairly large pistons. They, they fit into an old car, it's a, a brush made about 1913. It was a single cylinder engine of about 10 horsepower. The original pistons were of course cast iron but they want to make them out of aluminium this time and they have to be very thick to get the same weight as the original iron ones. The top of this piston is probably over, a little over 20 mil thick, uh, even as machined. This one wasn't quite as good as it should have been, so we've got to make some more. This is the rather ugly pattern for the thing, very ugly pattern indeed. Um, and what we're actually going to make today are the cores that uh, produce the inside of the pattern. And we're going to make them in a CO2 silicate sand. Uh, and here we have five kilos of sand and half a percent of glucose powder, the white stuff. That is to give us some breakdown on the core. Without it, uh, the cores, you'd be chiseling them out with a hammer. I'll just give this a bit of a quick mix. First up, just the sand and the glucose powder. Now, I'll add the required amount of silicate. Oh, get that on the scales here. Right, now, I need 7.5% silicate in 5 kilos, so that's 375 grams, which is a fair bit. That's a pretty strong brew, but then I like it a bit strong. 320. Close enough, it's about 380, should be right. <laughs> Close enough. Now we take it off the scales, get rid of those. I might add this method of mixing never works very well, but I have a recipe for it, a remedy for it rather. That'll do for the moment. The easiest way to make certain it's mixed is to whack it through a sieve. This is about, a, oh, about an eighth inch sieve I guess. Get all that off the edge. Just push it, force it through the sieve, it breaks up all the lumps. And then a little bit of stirring around by the hands afterwards and it'll be pretty reasonable. This stuff incidentally is quite alkaline, uh, sodium silicate, so if you're at all sensitive to uh, uh, that, you need to probably wear gloves. Okay, I'll just get my assistant to run outside and hose that, and hose it clean. Thank you. Now you can see it's not very well mixed, but it soon will be. Just toss it round together a bit like this for a bit. It's getting a bit more like it, a little bit. Uh, still a few dry patches in it. That's not looking too bad at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I'll transfer it to a bucket I can put a bit of a lid on.
and you're not actually pushing it into the core mould, it pays to keep a lid on this stuff because uh, carbon, carbon dioxide in the air will set it off for a start. Now I've pre-coated this core box with this uh, silver looking stuff, it's a sort of a release agent. Uh, and this core is actually a composite core, we use a, a stick of shell core to form the gudgeon pin area, gudgeon pin hole itself. Clamp the box together. Okay. Yeah. Now this sand is just absolutely no green strength at all. Uh, so it's uh, it's quite easy to ram into moulds. Except that in this case, I know from having made a few of these before, that it's quite difficult to get this sand underneath the gudgeon pin bosses properly. You've got to sort of take some effort to poke it in under there. All right. And I also have to reinforce these cores with some wires because eventually when it's put into the mould, uh, the core will hang on this flange around the top of it. Okay, so there's one wire that I think we'll put across. No, go there, put that one that way for the moment. And we'll ram some of the sand around it. Hope we've got this right. And now two of these, possibly one across about there. Ah, come on. And another one across about there. Bury those under a little more sand. Carefully strike it off level. You've got to be a bit careful doing this. The sand is has so low of green strength that you can damage it quite badly when you strike off if you're not careful. Now I'll just get all of this sand back into the bucket, the lid on the bucket before I start gassing things with the CO2. Put some vent holes right down to the bottom of it. There we go, one. I found out by past experience with this core also that it pays to have quite a few of these holes if you want the core to cure properly. Okay, that's probably enough. Put this there. If you don't do that, the, uh, the gas when it first hits the sand will blow it everywhere. Now I'll give it about 30 seconds here. Okay, that seems cured. Now I'll give it a little bit in these holes as well. Also in the one on this side here. That should have it, I hope. Now let's see if we can get this core out. This is where you find out if the pattern maker did his job right. <laughs> 
baseboard to put it on. Upside down and I just get a little hammer to knock it out with. Okay. It's coming. Now can I get it and pull it apart? Well, there's one half coming off. Now this one's a bit, a little bit firmer there. It's coming. Oh, it's a bit tight, that one. But it's coming. Voila. One core. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad at all, that one. Put that one aside. Just check that these uh, little gas vents here are clear. Yep. Yep. Put a little bit more uh, release agent on the. Uh, boy, gone. A little bit more release. I don't want too much. Well, hmm, that's exactly what I've got too much. Oh dear, dear. Oh well, <coughs> can't win them all. You smiles too much. Try and sop some of it up a bit. Okay. Maybe I'll just uh, wipe some of it off, the excess off with this bit of rag would be the, be the go, I think, here. I don't know whether you really have to put this stuff on every time. I, I do, but I think uh, commercially they wouldn't. Bit of shell core again. g clamp. And we're away again. Now, see if I can force it underneath the gudgeon boss. Quite tight in there. Ah. They are coming. Ah. This one will come fairly easy, I think, now. Almost a bit too easily. I hope I've cured it right. Come on. Looking good. It's tight though. And there we go. Oh no! See, it hasn't quite cured down here. That sand hasn't cured. Didn't give it enough. Uh, well, that's a bit weird. <laughs> hmm, didn't gas it enough. That's a bit sad. We could use it if we have to, but mm, it will continue to cure in the air a bit, I guess, but not brilliant. We can see if we can do better next time.
box is just a little wide to comfortably grab with your hand. Come on, darling, off you come. Here she comes. Well, that side looks all right. I'm on. That one's looking better. That's a nice looking core. She'll do nicely. Okay. The other thing we have to make for this uh, piston mould are some pouring basins for the top of it. And this is a little uh, uh, core mould that we will make them out of uh, silicate saw in, a uh, silicate sand in, sorry. Uh, and it's a, a Campbell inspired pouring basin. Uh, with the ridge, as we'll see when it's finished, we'll just, uh, it, it should be quite easy to make, but like all silicate work, I've found uh, that it took two or three goes to get it right. Okay. I need to get another two. Gee, I'm going to be lucky to make it, but I, I should do. Being only just, perhaps, by looking at that sand level. And there's the bit there of it that will uh, actually be the top, connect with the top of the down sprue in the mould. found that this needs seems to need a lot of gassing and a lot of vents to get the gas down into the sand with. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay, got it even, yep, 30 seconds, that's a good 30 seconds there, that certainly seems cured, alright we'll flick her over and put some in from the vents on the back here, right. Okay, let's see if we've made it. Pick that up, sit it on the board here, hammer, give it a little tap. Oh, let's strike it off level first, it probably wouldn't hurt. Yeah, give it a little tap. Here she comes, it's just starting to move. And hopefully if we can lift it well enough, we'll have a pouring basin. And there we go, one nice looking little pouring basin. Excellent. That's not too shabby, that's pretty good. One to go. I'm sure there are better release agents than this one that lasts, ones that last for more than one core, but yeah, this is just what I use and it's it's worked for me, so uh, I stick with it. Now I'll just check to see that those vents here are clear. That's got them. Good enough. Lucky last.
Oh yeah, easy enough sand there. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> Well, that should be it. <sighs> See whether it looks like it's going to come out. This one's a bit tighter. Stay as she comes. She's moved. Oh boy, did it ever. Just about fell out then. And there we go. That's what we want. Yep. Quite good. Well, that's our four pouring basins done. We're laughing. Job done. Now there's just the mess, Charlie.